welcome to Heartbeat. Today, I want to talk about what we can do to move forward when we feel a bit stuck. Now, often when we have our heartbeats, I try to think of a title to give the heartbeat that I'm going to give each week. And this week, I struggle to decide what I'm going to call it. And I'll give you a few of the titles that I've got. The first one is, what do you have? what is in your hands, how to move forward when you feel stuck, and then finally, perseverance in following what God has asked of you. And really all four of those phrases, titles, summarize what I wanna talk about today, about how do we follow the call that God has put in our lives if we feel like there's a certain direction that God wants us to head in, but we become a bit stuck in that. You know, maybe God has asked something of you, and you think, okay, I'm gonna follow in that direction. And it takes a bit of courage to step out and to pursue that direction, to go in that way. And maybe for you, it's pursuing a new career. Maybe it's starting a new university course. Maybe it's starting a conversation with some, someone, some people in your life that you know you need to have. Maybe it's something brand new in your life that you weren't expecting. Whatever it is, it takes a bit of courage to step out in that direction. And when you do that, have you ever had the experience of them becoming a little bit stuck? Of then thinking, well, I've walked in this way, but nothing's changed. I'm waiting for the next step and I can't see what it is. And you start to doubt whether or not God actually asked that of you. You start to think, oh, maybe I've got it wrong. You question God, God, is this really what you want of me? And you begin to maybe even back away and back down because you're a bit stuck as to what to do next. Well, for me in my life, that's a place that I've been in currently or recently. And I've been praying in my life about a new direction that I believe God wants me to go in work-wise. And like, I'm not going anywhere from here. But there are some other things that I believe God wants me to pursue as well. And so I thought, okay, let's step out. Let's give these things a go. So I went and applied for a position. But you know what? I didn't get it. I didn't get the spot. And I remember thinking, but God, I thought this is what you'd asked of me. I thought you wanted me to go in this direction. So I thought, well, I do think that's what God wants for me. So I'm going to try again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask someone who has a bit more experience about some ideas of what I could do. So I sent them an email and they responded, which I was quite excited about. And they sent me some ideas of different things I could do and different places I could look to pursue what I believe God's asking of me. And then after that, it's been a little while, and I remember scrolling through different jobs and different positions that had come up, but nothing jumped out to me as what I should do. And so just the other day, I was vacuuming in my house and I was talking to God. Don't know about you, but maybe you too talk to God when you vacuum. I do. And I'm talking to God as I'm vacuuming. And I said to God, God, I thought this is what you wanted me to do. I thought you wanted me to pursue some other things, but nothing is opening up. God, what do you want? And I remember just this quiet Holy Spirit voice, that's what I believe it was, who I believe it was, said to me, Emma, what do you have and what do you know? And so I thought about that, that question, what do I have and what do I know? And then it came to my mind that the person who I had emailed only a little while ago had replied and given me suggestions of things I could do but I hadn't done any of them, nothing. And so I felt like God was saying to me, the answer is there. You need to go back to that email and work through those suggestions and then I'll give you the next steps. And how often in life do we feel like we're stuck, but God has actually given us the next step. It's just hard for us to see it. No, I want to share with you in the book of Exodus about Moses. And Moses was someone who God spoke to in the burning bush. You might know that story. There's a burning bush that God's out, God's out. Moses is out with his sheep 
And one day he sees this burning bush and God speaks to him and says to him, I want you to go to Egypt and I want you to get the Israelite people out of Egypt because they were under the rule of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. So Moses is asked by God to go to Egypt and get them out. And Moses doubts and he says, but God, like, who do I say sent me? And God says, you will say it is I am. It's God who's sending you. And then in Exodus chapter four, verse one, read this with me. This is what Moses says. Moses speaking to God, it says, then Moses answered, but suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say the Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the staff on the ground and it became a snake and Moses drew back from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. So he reached out his hand and grasped it and it became a staff in his hand so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. You know, so here Moses doubts God and he says, God, how will they know that you are the one who sent me? And then God asks Moses a question. What's that in your hand? What are you holding? And Moses is holding his staff that he would use to guide his sheep. And then God does something miraculous with it. He changes it into a snake and then changes it back to the staff and says, this is how they will know that I, the Lord God, have sent you. And here, God says to Moses, when Moses is doubting, he's been told, God's told him to go in a certain direction, but Moses is doubting. God says, what is in your hand? What do you already have? We read something similar in the book of Matthew when Jesus feeds the 5,000. There's a whole huge crowd who come to Jesus and they listen to his teaching and then it gets to night time and they all sit down and the disciples are saying to Jesus, you know, how are we going to feed all these people? And if you go with me to Matthew chapter 13, let's look at verses 16. Jesus says to them, to the disciples, they need not go away. You give them something to each. They replied, the disciples replied, we have nothing. We have nothing here but two loaves and five fish. Or rather the other way around, we have five loaves and two fish. Let me read that again. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. And then in verse 17, the disciples reply, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And then Jesus says, bring them here to me. And then we know that Jesus gives thanks and he multiplies the loaves and fishes so that everyone had something to eat. And in a similar way, God says to us, what do you have? Have you ever responded to God with, I have nothing? Like the disciples, I have nothing. Oh, but I have five loaves and two fish. I have nothing. Oh, but I have an email with some suggestions of things I could follow. I want to encourage you today that if you believe that God has asked you to do something, to take you in a new direction, maybe to have a conversation, to repair some things in your life, that if you are feeling a bit stuck, to ask yourself the question, what do I have? Because God has already provided you with what you need. Maybe you need to go back to God and have time with him and say, God, is this really what you want of me? Because certainly trying to pursue that would be the right thing to do. And then after that saying, God, what have you given me? And ask yourself the question, what do I have? So I hope that really encourages you today. I know that's something that's certainly been going on in my life that I need to keep pursuing and just looking at God, what have you given me to take me to the next step that you want for me in my life? Why don't we pray right now? Why don't you think about that thing in your life that you believe God is asking you to do? And together, let's join our prayers and ask God to come and help us with those next steps. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for your direction. Lord, I pray for all of us who believe that you're asking something of us that you would help us to see what those next steps are, that you would help us not to be stuck, but to move forward 
in pursuing the plan that you have for our lives. I pray that you would open our eyes, you would open our hearts, and you open our ears to see, to hear, and to feel what it is that you want us to do. And I pray that you would help us to see what we have in our hands that you can use to take us closer to you. I thank you already for your provision and your guidance that you will give us. And I ask all of this in your mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.